So this is the third in our trilogy of conversations with Professor Velimir Abramovich. Hi, Velimir. How are exactly. you today? Exactly. Yeah. So we. I been... hope it will not be boring when we meet finally. That's it, not a possibility. It will be interesting. <laughs> not a possibility in conversation with you, Velimir. So what what we've done? So we've been looking at well your life's work, which is the meaning of yes. life. Yes. And we've so far we've taken a look at us humans here on planet Earth and from an esoteric point of view. And then yes. we took a look at the terrain, the sort of board we have in this game of life to play on. Yes. And at the end of that interview is when we decided we have to do another episode because you began to talk about the, what what is actually going on here? You mentioned the word uh, secret societies. Uh, you talked about um, groups in Asia who are making decisions on our behalf, and you gave the impression that these are positive force for good, and that this is in our interest. Of course, the fact that they are secret, and you know, so many questions come to mind. And so here we yes. are. Since Taking ever away. we had yes yes since ever we had. Uh, uh, that occult uh, not only technology but also science, and which is completely esoteric. But it is not only esoteric for the general public; it is also esoteric for discoverers of those laws. So that is the, that is the point, because uh, once you are completely out of uh, public view, public view, and you want to uh, be involved in the high highest uh, understanding in the highest knowledge of uh, cosmical laws. So uh, to be a human on the uh, supreme level of hum uh, humanism or, or, or what is the nature of a, of a human being, uh, you actually have to empty your mind completely and to liberate it from secondary thoughts, but not only secondary thoughts, but also from the uh, all the normal uh, wishes of the uh, human being who is living in a city or uh, at a village or anywhere, uh, anywhere else in the society. So you have to be completely free of materialistic thoughts and to be, let's say, uh, spiritual in a way that you understand that there is a spirit, there is a soul, and there is a body, but body and soul are not important when we are talking about the highest esoteric uh, insight. So uh, what we have since ever, I'm uh, talking about at least seven to 10,000 years, we have those secret societies which were uh, earlier based in Mesopotamia, so in today's Iraq, and uh, Sumerians, and uh, Chaldeans, Chaldeans, who, who were actually the first astrologers and the first astronomers, but it is six, uh, five to six, seven thousand years ago. But we have some uh, 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 shamanistic, I would say, so knowledge, which is older than that, which is much older than astrology and astronomy, with, uh, which uh, started the uh, written history of uh, mankind many years, I mean, at least 1,000 to 2,000 years before, we had uh, those uh, insights where here in Balkans, that's, uh, that is the point, uh, 10 to 11,000 uh, years before, we had in Lepensky Vir and also in Vincha, we had uh, th those are, I mean, today's, uh, today's names. I don't know how they, they called it in, in, in that time, probably they called it nature, <laughs> Not, nothing special. And uh, there uh, we have uh, not only villages, but also what we call urbanistic plans and uh, all, um, uh, the beginning of the sacred mathematics. So those uh, in, in Lepensky, which is at the, at the bank of the Danube, uh, the, those villages were uh, very, uh, I would say, mathematically. Uh, advanced in a way that they were building uh, houses which were according to the golden section, 
and when you make a cross in that house, so uh, round houses, and uh, when you make a cross in 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 the in that circle, which is actually the the uh, let's say the the floor of the house. You make a circle, and that circle, from that circle, you uh, can uh, deflect for a certain uh, amount, certain number. And there were beings which were uh, looking like fishes, which uh, later, much later, I mean, ten thousand later, were were taken in a Christianity. So the fish is the symbol of Christianity, and. That all started in uh, in uh, that Danube civilization, I would say, uh, Lepensky, Lep Le Lepensky vortex. We are in Serbian means vortex, and uh, there are vortices vortices in uh, in a Danube, of course, which is uh, becoming very wide in that in that area. And uh, there you have those beings, which were actually symbolic, symbolic, uh, uh, made of stone. Symbolic sculptures, and those sculptures are uh, from the uh, from the center of the house, which is the center of the cross. Also, and uh, those uh, those sculptures were a little bit uh, moved, so that in the point where they were placed is exactly the distance of a, a golden section. Which means that those beings were very much into into natural way of thinking. So they actually were uh, reflecting the natural ma matrix, and that natural matrix is not conscious mathematics. So it is subconscious mathematics which build ourselves as well as the world itself. So they they started that civilization eleven thousand years or uh, before the Christ, or uh, six, at least 6,000 years before the Sumerians and Chaldeans in Mesopotamia, where are the uh, Tigris and uh, Euphrates, I mean, those, those rivers there, which in today's, in today's Iraq, where Babylon finally were, were built, was built. And that is that is that line of civilization of the uh, secrecy and the occult understanding or in occult involvement into the natural level of understanding, and that is something which uh, was hiding that civilization. I mean that that was the line. So that line starts from Danube, comes to 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 the Euphrates and. Uh, uh, Mesopotamia, actually, Euphrates and, uh, and, and the Tigris. Why? Because you take a boat, simple boat, you Danube, Black Sea, and then you come to, 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 to the Bosphor and to Dardanelles, and you can, by simple boat, you can come to, to, uh, to Iraq. You don't need a big ship, you don't need even, <laughs> even the motor, because it is, it is a river which, which leads you directly directly to the Bosphor and from there, but a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit of, uh, of, of power or wind, whatever, you can, you can come there. And that is how that natural mathematics came to the, to, uh, they call it uh, Anunnaki, and those Anunnaki were like white gods. Why? Because that people in, the, in, in today's Iraq or in Mesopotamia, they were they, they were not white. They were a little bit colored, and these people of the, at the Danube were completely white. And so that white people with the mathematics came into after five thousand years. I mean, it not, it did not happen so so quickly, but for a very long time it it lasted that influence. So they came there, and there they start to be conscious of that mathematics. So that is because of Chaldeans, uh, Chaldean tribes. Chaldean tribes were in a desert, and they uh, because in a desert you have a very clear sky. So they started look at the at the stars, and their question was, okay, stars are there, I'm here. What is the connection? And that connection is astrology. So that's how astrology came into being in the in the desert, and it comes all together. So this uh, natural subconscious, subconscious mathematics from the Danubian Danubian uh, uh, civilization. And the, 
and that question of uh, uh, what is the uh, connection or what is the relation in between external wo world or macro uh, world and uh, ourselves. And that's how started the complete Western civilization. That is actually, I think, the way of uh, becoming uh, completely uh, aware of what mathematics means for physics and what, for what physics means for, for technology. Uh, came After that came Pythagoras. So Pythagoras, uh, he was 20 years in, in, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the custody in, in Babylon. There he had some Chaldean uh, teachers and very, very high priests, which were completely uh, hermetic. I mean, so they completely close, close circle. And he, when he came back to, to Croton, uh, to, to uh, Italy, he started to disclose that knowledge par partially. And that knowledge actually is, uh, firstly, Pythagoras, uh, Pythagoras uh, made that term uh, philosophy. That is his term. So from, from that starts philosophy, but not only philosophy, but mathematics, but not only mathematics, but music. So he made a monochord. And that monochord is a mathematical instrument uh, on which the whole musical harmony is later is, is based. So that's how our civilization become external knowledge of what was actually occult knowledge for so many thousand years. But that moment you have a division. I mean, so you, you have you have those who uh, stood completely into shadow, those people who did not want to go in to make schools like Pythagoras or to make uh, uh, to make that knowledge public at all, not, not to teach to anybody like was Pythagoras. And then it was also uh, in a way Socrates and then came uh, Plato with Academy. And from there we now we have University Aristotle. Uh, Aristoteles, and then now we have those academies and all the, our university science, which actually actually now uh, came to to the end. So it from uh, that that knowledge, which was externalized in Pythagoras' time, and then developed to all these centuries in the Western civilization, came to end. So now we cannot. We, we, we cannot develop it anymore. We have to, uh, to return to the, to the roots of the whole thing. So to the beginning of, of our civilization and to redefine those, those uh, uh, that start actually of the, of the whole thing. I mean, mentally, not only mentally, but philosophically and not only philosophically, but mathematically. And that is because mathematics is a certain language of nature. It is not completely human languages. Partly it's a, it's a natural or God's land language, and partly it is invented by men. So it's a kind of synthesis, which now we have to be aware completely. So now we are facing that moment. And that is why Tesla is so important, because Tesla is symbolizing that secret knowledge, which is which is becoming technology of our time, which we do not understand. For example, transistors. Transistors have what we call a, a tunnel effect. And that tunnel effect was never explained in physics, but we use that transistors for, I don't know, 50 years, 60 years. That is how it is, it is going. Also, lead deals also have that tunnel effect. So that's why, for example, four watts of, of, uh, of a lamp can can give you luminosity of 100 watts. You know what, what I'm speaking about? We have technology, we don't understand how it is working. Because we, we uh, technology was developing all the time, but without develop, development of science. So science is what we called science 100 or 150 years ago. But technology is not. How it happened? Because there are some secret societies who are uh, aware of completely new mental uh, roots of, of the science or me new mental presuppositions of what we have to be aware to, to, to make a logical progression or mathematics or whatever conscious 
it is of, of, of that knowledge. So now we have a secret science and external, externalized uh, technology, which is actually not understandable at this moment. So that is, that is why I'm talking about that circle. And that circle, it is not governing politically or militarily, partly militarily, but because uh, military is uh, above in any country, military is out of, 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 of law. I mean, it is, it is above the, the, the parliament or a political structures. Why? Because it must be very secret. And everybody say, yes, it is so. Of course, we have to have military secrets. But what are those military secrets? Those military secrets are actually scientific discoveries. But that is the that is the core of any military secret in any country. But so if you if you have knowledge, you have power. Everybody knows that. But the thing is that uh, something which is um, deeper than any military structure or any secret institute of uh, America, Russia, in, in England, uh, France, uh, even Germany have some. <laughs> have some freedom in, in scientific uh, research. Okay, so we have that, that moment that we actually have to obey some instructions which are coming not directly from men to men. So it is not like, I don't know, came a dictator and said, you have to do that or that. No, that closed circle, which is very, very deep and has no connections uh, with, uh, I mean, with a uh, binormal communication, which means that I speaking uh, one to each other like we are speaking now. No, they are just by their mental power. They are just uh, emitting certain ideas very clearly. And that is how those ideas are coming into power over ionosphere, which is actually the brain of uh, humanity. So what we have in ionosphere, we have as an information. So we are downloading actually informations from ionosphere. I mean, that, that what was Tesla discovered first, first, and then it was uh, uh, confirmed so many times. So that's how they are they are doing. So they emit the ideas in the ionosphere, and from the ionosphere, those are receiving or downloading those ideas who have that certain degree of freedom that can, uh, uh, can uh, receive it. That is like, like a simple radio. So you have, you have had a thousands of emitting stations, but uh, what you can uh, receive is only what you can, can receive on, on, on your radio. So it, uh, or it actually, it depends on receiving frequencies. Cosmos is, is emitting everything, but we are receiving only part of it. And that's what is happening exactly with the humanity and with the death of fuel circle, which is emitting and emitting those, those ideas. At this moment, ideas which are emitting are unification of the, of the planetary society. So states are obsolete way of organization of, uh, of, of, of humans at this moment. So they are very uh, slow. And they, they are actually blocking the development of, uh, of humanity. Why? Because they take too many resources and, and power, human, uh, human energy and the uh, human lifetime. So it must be liquidated. And that is exactly what pandemic, pandemia is doing. <laughs> pandemia, this current pandemia is showing that states are obeying somebody or something which is absolutely in the in the dark. So we don't know. You see what what for example are um, uh, are are people are uh, accustomed for or used for to 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 accept. For example, some you have certain disease. Now you have remedy, but nobody knows what are in that bottles. What is the content in that bottles? So you are receiving remedy which is absolutely out of. Uh, of knowledge, I mean, for not not for for the general people, but the general public, but for uh, specialists, not a single doctor, I mean, on the world who is giving that vaccine, is not allowed to open that bottle to see what is he is giving to the people. That is one thing, and there is no abduction. 
So you don't know if somebody has died or not from, from uh, that disease. You, you gave vaccine. It never happened in history. And it is going to, I mean, worldwide. What does it show? It is show that there is a world government which is governing, I mean, absolutely with the sovereignty. I mean, we, without any obstacle, I would say, and that the states are off and the whole political class are also, also completely off. So they are out of power. And that is why I, I, I would say that it is obvious, I mean, completely obvious that there is a world government which is not political world government. No, that is a secret scientific <laughs> world government. So world government, which has some occult knowledge, which in science, I mean, specifically in science, are of the higher level than we know in our university, also in the secret institutes of, of military and so on, which are actually uh, uh, making secret of something which is insignificant, very, very, <laughs> very often when you when you finally understand what they are hiding they are hiding something which is out of question i mean to be to be important so that is that is the thing and now we are having we are having we are we are having the rise of the completely new relation to environment to the to the universe and to the structure of of a man you see, for example, on the on the uh, internet, how many uh, spiritual uh, spiritual programs you have. I mean, thousands and thousands, with the millions, there's hundreds of millions people listening the special music with the special frequencies, which are actually uh, influencing their chakras and so on. I mean, now you have a transformation over this informational level. I mean, of communication which we are using now too, I mean, you have the transformation of a human mind from the materialistic and the positive reality to the completely hidden spiritual reality where now we will meet those secret societies finally after, uh, after all coming coming into, into light, coming into, in, in, into public, public view. Why is it so? Because uh, or knowledge was always something which which belonged to the individuals. Uh, that higher knowledge or scientific knowledge or philosophy or re religion, whatever. Now you have also the change of that uh, of the type of religiosity of the world. Uh, now we have scientific type of, the, of religiosity, which is coming through astrophysics, for example. They are working on cosmogonic questions. So how this world came into being, Big Bang theory, strings theory, tra -la -la, okay. But they are focusing that problem, and that is the most important, that problem, problem of God. So through the scientific uh, research, we also come to the question of how this world came into being. And that question is the question, the religious question. It is not a scientific question up to now, but now you have the synthesis of science and religion because of development of science itself. And finally, we will, we will have united uh, a world without states, no states. So a kind of a new, a new uh, society, which will, will be, which will be uh, led by uh, enlightened, but in scientific and religious way, beings which are uh, uh, inherited the knowledge of previous times, times, but now you can emit that knowledge I mean, all, all over the world because of internet. That is completely new moment. I mean, in the history of civilization, where actually people are trying to understand and firstly, have that idea at all that actually somebody who has higher knowledge and by cosmic laws is governing the humanity and, uh, the, uh, and, and that is not a question of, of political or uh, political, military or even economic organization, but of the, of, of the level of ideas. Because when you have one idea, that is like mathematics. It does not need any, any support of energy or uh, 
or, or a kind of uh, uh, a marketing. You have the idea and that idea is uh, unbreakable law for itself, which is absolutely governing the, the, the material level of, of existence. And those laws are recognized in physics, in chemistry, in mathematics, in, in logics also, in, in epistemology. So we have those spiritual science already developed to the level where we have to, to understand that behind the material world, there is metaphysical world, which is absolutely governing the material world. But what we want to know is who made it. And that is the moment of religious, <laughs> re, re, religious, uh, uh, religious moment on, and the question on, uh, about, about the God. And now we have to go by scientific approach to the question of uh, creator of the world we have actually to go over existing religions, over Islam, over Christianity, over all the religions, because those have, or let's say they are very much uh, uh, incrustated, incrustated by uh, mythology. We have mythology, we have um, very much in the, all the religious uh, uh, conception of creation of the world, and uh, also not only mythology, but also what we what we call fairy tales. So I mean that is the that is that is the moment when we have to liberate ourselves of that and to understand that there is a cosmical mind and there is a human mind. They are in a very close relation. So now we are going to uh, change the whole world. Uh, in the I mean the type of religiosity is changing towards. Uh, a scientific way of researching of creator in the in the way that uh, we are uh, synthesizing religion and science and that is exactly what theosophists in 19th century were predicting and they are aiming to 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 realize that so now we are, we are living a kind of theosophical time and who proves that elon musk who comes from the theosophical circle from from the from 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 South uh, South uh, Africa, and uh, he firstly was theosophist there, but all of a sudden he became the richest man of the world. How he made that money, nobody knows. How is that possible? So if you have just a marketing over over internet that somebody is the richest, and everybody say yes, yes, that is so. So that is the power of information. But what he's symbolizing, because of Tesla car, and so he's symbolizing this transformation of uh, state-divided societies or ethnic, ethnically divided societies uh, or uh, pr pragmatic divided, like, I don't know, America is, for example, the, the, it's not about uh, nationalism or, or race, but it is about uh, economy and, uh, and the pragmatism and the interest. And now we are transforming that society is completely new society where actually, uh, oh, firstly, ma making, um, ma making this uh, 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 informational level of unification, and then we come, come to the other level of unification, and that is uh, uh, the mind unification. So we have to understand that actually mathematics is everywhere the same like a mobile phone. Mobile phone is the same in China or in Colombia. And that is the same with mathematical laws, with the physical laws. Now we have to, to, to become aware of scientific approach to the universe and to ourselves. And also, I would say that uh, uh, human mind is too modest. It is too limited to understand creator itself and uh, also the moment of creation and the reason of the creation of the world. I think that is the limit of, of human understanding, our philosophy, our science, our relig religion. What is the most important is that uh, in spite of, of, of that limitation, we have mind, which is given by creator. I, I don't, don't have better word <laughs> for 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 God at this moment, so the Creator, who gave us, us our mind to understand his deeds, to understand what he made, not himself, but what he made. 
and he made something which is based on infinity. So our mind can understand infinity. From that understanding, we can create science to help us, to help us with the illness, with the death, and with the aging. And those are the uh, problems uh, or the source of suffering of human beings. So that is that is the end of a, of a circle. And that is the moment where this uh, Asian uh, circle, uh, occult circle, which is governing over political means also, but why? Not because of getting power, but because of development, uh, accelerating development of humanity and, and the civilization. That is the reason why they use politics, not because, not because to get power over, I don't know, British islands, for example, <laughs> not because of that. So that is, that is the moment of complete transformation. We are actually, uh, we live, I mean, you and, and, and me, we are living in the uh, most important time since ever, since ever that I know. So we have, this is the edge of, of, of one uh, chain of civilizations which were based on space, energy, and the force. And we start the civilization where we are going to understand time, so to understand the laws, metaphysical laws of the universe and become, be, become harmonious with, with them. And that is something which is des des uh, desirable for so many millenniums, I mean, so many thousand years, uh, uh, that individual becomes the part of the wholeness in a way that wholeness does not harm individuals. So we, we become, as we are, we are one, but now we have to, to be one, oneness, actually. Oneness, we are forming oneness, uh, with with uh, our consciousness and individual consciousness to synchronize with the universal consciousness which is governing the whole universe. And it was not so until now because our individual consciousness was very much, uh, uh, let's say, very, very much um, uh, blocked with uh, our desire and the human desire to, uh, to make a part of uh, material goods or to to have a power over the other man. But now that is not necessary anymore. Now we will, we will make a kind of uh, uh, artificial intent, intelligence slavery. So, I mean, the robots, they will work 24 hours. They will, they, they will take energy from the environment. It is not necessary to feed them. And it is, we will not have a emotional relation to, to the machines. That's, that's now completely new kind of a technological communism, which is, which is at the edge of realization. Once we, we, we take these military funds and transfer it to the artificial intelligence, that will be, at, I think it is very close, close moment. That will be the, mo that, that, that will be the, the fantastic boost of, uh, of uh, development, mutation, mutation in the mind, but also in the material material way of uh, of living it is not necessary that we kill anybody i mean <laughs> the universe is enormous <laughs> so that that is so if we i mean not to take for example part of the population of a humanity to the other planet to mars to 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 moon to where, wherever no it is not necessary it is just enough uh, to understand what time is. So we just make a, a, a time shift or uh, change the coordination, time coordination of the part of the population of the world, making, making them a parallel world with, uh, with the so, good, so, so good conditions that nobody will, would say no. <laughs> they say, oh, that is fantastic. And we can intersect those worlds and we have the constant communication. But it's all higher knowledge which that occult circle is aiming, aiming to transfer, to transfer to humanity, I mean. Uh, and, and, and that is the, the, the moment of destruction in a way. When you have some new discovery, or you are talented, or you are genius, you have to break uh, old system. And that is the problem. Now we have system of university. We have system of institutes. We have, we have system, a system of financing uh, scientific uh, programs and so on, which is completely out of question. We have to delete all that and to start a completely new. One. 
new new science with a with a new understanding. So, I have a question. Uh -huh. Hmm? Are you saying, you seem to be saying that transhumanism is a good thing and it's in our interest and we shouldn't be afraid of it. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes, we, but we have to, to govern that uh, transhumanistic uh, line of, uh, of uh, development. We have to govern it by ethical, uh, ethical laws. So it's up to us. It's not up to robots to be good, but to those people who are making robots. So that's simple like that. So we have firstly to get that higher knowledge to, to understand that wars are, I mean, solving okay. nothing. Absolutely. So that actually only the knowledge is in question and then to make those programs which are harmonious with what we need in mm -hmm. relation with the environment. And that, so this, that is up to humans. So this knowledge and this technology has the potential to liberate us and it also has the potential to enslave us. So let's take a look at that. What do you think is going to happen now then? Do you, what do you think is, let's see, what are the greatest threats to our, you know, our freedom, our liberation, our well-being, our development? And, and what are the greatest opportunities? I would say that it's like always, I mean, good against evil. I mean, that's, that's always like that. So we have, we, let's say we who want something which is good, we have to go over those who are evil, and with the help of God, we will do that. The other other uh, line of development, uh, other line of happening, is the uh, self destruction of the civilization. Because if uh, if those who are evil, let's say, okay, they are transhumanistic of transhumanistic orientation, and they now want to have those robots who will, I mean, enslave the whole humanity and so on. But the point is that uh, humanity is not artificial product. Humanity is made by the universe and by creator of the universe. So they, with uh, they, uh, their black magic intentions and with, with, uh, with the knowledge of, uh, of power, uh, which they want to use to enslave us, and that is not enough. Above that, there is something which is, uh, let, let's say, which is break that, that plan and make it impossible. And that happened already in a human history on the smaller level, let's say, uh, Genghis Khan, let's say Napoleon, let's say, let's say Hitler, let's say so many dictators, Stalin, whoever. So that is not possible. I mean, what they want, those black ma magical guys in a, in a transhumanistic, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 conspiracy. It's transhumanistic conspiracy of evil people who have a higher technological level, but want to, to use them to enslave the other people. So that is not the enough, not e e enough level of knowledge to, uh, to do that. To actually to realize that, so they will they will they will try. They are trying already, but that is, that is not possible to 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 realize. No, they they will absolutely uh, fail. It, it must fail because goodness uh, comes from infinity, and the evil comes from uh, from what is uh, what is not what is finite. So. Uh, intelligence and parts, and that in intelligence uh, is combinating, co may make combinations of that parts. And that is what I call evil. So evil is relative. Whatever evil they want to achieve, you have some other aspect of, of evil, which is good for somebody or something. So that is a relative, relative level of existence, but the absolute level of existence is the level of infinity. On the level of infinity, you don't have any actions. When you don't have any actions, you don't have evil actions too. So <laughs> that is actually why uh, um, good, goodness is absolute and it is above the relative game of parts, which is uh, which is driven by by uh, evil intelligence. So goodness is above, and it is. It, I mean, temporarily they can prevail somewhere and for some some reason and so on, 
but not for a, not for a long time. Finally, go, goodness will prevail. That sounds great. So tell me, do you think that God is the source of all things, including this, you know, the good, the force for good, but also the evil that's present in the world? Where did that come from? Must be. Uh, you see, I was thinking about that ethical moment of, uh, of a world creation where we do not know what is the origin of evil at all. Why? Why God made evil? And because evil, that is not something which is perfect, obvious. And God should make uh, his creation as completely perfect. So no evil. Why, I don't know, children are suffering. It is a very old question, of course. I think that uh, is simple like this. So what God made are uh, one law for the whole universe. That is the law of continuity. And that continuity governs and produces also continuum. So that is, that is something which is infinite. When you make something with, with, which is infinite, and th th there must be a reason why that infinity is differenti differentiating itself into parts. Why it do does that not stay completely infinite and still so without any, any motion? Because, simply because, in infinity, you have many centers in coexistence. And that is the point. Where is the center of infinity? Anywhere. Where is the other center of infinity? Also anywhere. So actually infinity consists only of centers because there is no periphery. There is no border. So whenever you say, uh, thinking on infinity, it is the center of infinity. Two centers are enough and there are many of, and they are all in coexistence because infinity is existing uh, uh, at once everywhere. I mean, uh, uh, everywhere uh, li like a wholeness. So the wholeness, infinite wholeness, is is uh, um, uh, existing in the in the moment, in the moment which is zero time. So that is actually constant present time of our experience. That is infinite directly in our experience, everyday experience. But the thing is that there are many, many, many centers of it. And two centers are making radius. Radius is making uh, a sphere. And that sphere is the part, the part of infinity. That because of polycentrism of many centers which are in coexistence, infinity starts to differentiate itself. So that's something which is, which is the consequence of, of what God actually created as the, as the, I would say, he created only the law of continuity, which is uh, the same as the universal consciousness. From there come continuum, which is a constant present time. And that is what we experience every day. That is all, all the time is present time, present, present moment, which is not uh, measurable. So it is zero time. That, that moment uh, has no uh, duration. And that is that is the thing. So <clears throat> why why God that made? Because everything comes again. I mean, circulating comes to to the to the infinity or to the consciousness. So he made laws which are in order to be perfect. You have making a law, you, a law of continuity. You have actually to dispatch everything. What are what, what are parts, but all. Also, big parts, small parts, parts in 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 any any measurable time because there are two times. There is one one time is a, is continuum of a constant present time, but a time, but the other time is a space time, and that is, for example, uh, uh, what we call wavelength of uh, of the light. So you have small wavelength, big wavelength, and it makes it it makes uh, what we call a sequence of time. So that that space aspect of time makes sequence of time. Time itself does not flow. It's always the same. And God make only the law. And that law gover governs or covers all the possibilities. And me, we, as the, as the human being, we have the freedom of choice. So if we know the law, we always can choose the consequence of the law which is uh, which conforms uh, ourselves with the with, with with the environment. 
so does not harm uh, us as existential being, existent, I mean, individual beings. And yes, but if we make kind of action to external world, which is wrong in a feed, feedback construction, so we have an action and you have reaction. And if we made a bad action, then that reaction will harm us as, as the being. That's why we need scientific higher knowledge to understand. If you know the law, you will never choose the bad consequence for yourself. And God make a law. So that law covers everything, but also gave the freedom to us. Maybe what our problem is, is our freedom, not what the, God, the God's, the, the, the God's uh, uh, creation. So we have a freedom, but we also have ignorance. That's a problem. If we have knowledge and freedom, that's okay. So we always choose what, what is, what is uh, fine and what is, <laughs> you know, what is uh, in, in, in accordance with, uh, with, with the universal laws. But it is not happening so. This, but on the other hand, people like freedom. I want to be free. I want to be. There are two, uh, let's say, two kinds of freedom. One freedom is negative. I want to be free of this, of that, of, uh, of the work, of uh, poverty, of uh, a dictator, whatever. So that's a negative aspect of freedom. But there is a positive aspect of freedom where, <clears throat> where I actually restrain from choosing anything. So before the choice, I'm free. When I make a choice, I start not to be free because then I start to determine myself with any kind of choice. So we have that universal consciousness, which is before making, making choices. And that is, that, that is uh, the freedom which God guarantees. But the freedom, free, freedom of our, us as a being, there is no guarantee actually that it is good for us to be, to be individually free because we can, by that freedom, choose completely, completely wrong action and get a wrong answer from the from the universe and make uh, something bad to ourselves which is not good for us so what we need is is not a freedom what we need is a higher knowledge to understand laws so that that our freedom could be governed governed with the, with that understanding otherwise we, we are making wrong choices and <laughs> which which we are doing all the time in history i mean as uh, as, as a humanity and also individual. So I think you're talking about the, the consequences is karma, right? What some people might call karma. You know, you do something, it's the wrong choice due to your ignorance, and you get the, the, the fallout. Exactly. Karma. Yes, in, um, absolutely. In India, yes, in India, I mean, in Vedas yes. and Upanishads, they know that exactly it is. I mean, karma, what is karma? Karma is a mathematical law of, of equality. So if you have too much from the left side, it will become equal with the right side. So that is karma. So that yeah. is equalizing our bad or good deeds from dharma. So every day yeah. we are making dharma and accumulating something which karma then, uh, uh, let, let's say, yeah. may, may make equal, equalize. So, so rather than making choices based on, because we are ignorant from this hypothesis, from your point, from you, through your lens, that the way forward, the way of being, is to just be and allow what wants to happen to happen without making choices. Is that what you're saying? Yes, it's better and to how make do you do no that? choices. How do you do that? How do you exist in that, in that state, in this world? You know what? I mean, we are automatic beings. I mean, auto, automats of, uh, automats of, of, uh, of cosmical forces uh, anyway. We don't know how our bodies function, for example, how blood is, is working, how our heart is working, why, how it is happening at all. So what we have, I mean, really is a very, very small, small uh, window of consciousness, I would, I would say. And in one second, our brain is processing only 16 bit of information. It is almost nothing. It is so, so low, low processing. So by consciousness, we would not be, be able to, to, to maintain our, ourselves alive because we do not control, I mean, what is happening with, with us. So we are automats 
anyway, but now we are trying by scientific knowledge, what else? We are trying to understand how we are we are functioning. That's what is working. Uh, I mean, medicine, uh, uh, biology, generally theoretical biology uh, has no answer on what life is. Ask any biologist what is life doesn't know. Huh. But what they were doing all the time, we are paying them what they are doing. <laughs> That's how, I mean, can be also, can be also, I mean, make that question. And that is that is the point. Also, genetics. Genetics now is on the level of a, of of atom, and that is not uh, medicine anymore. I mean, it's not biology anymore because on the on the level of atoms, the word life means nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, on the molecules, yes, but on the atoms, it is you you don't you don't have atomic form of life which is scientifically recognized recognized as that. That's why we have to widen our our views on, on, on the universe in general. We have to understand that they, actually the whole universe is alive just to see how and, <laughs> and how it is functioning and in what way it is it is alive. So that is uh, uh, one I mean very old knowledge for thousand years that everything is alive, especially in in, in Indian uh, tradition. Which is very, very, very rich with uh, with the true knowledge of of universe, but is also covered by these symbolic uh, representations of uh, of the anthropomorphic gods and so on. But uh, the thing is that now, through the Teslian way of thinking, now we are actually make a great jump, great, great, great uh, uh, step forward into understanding of the universe by understanding time, I would say. So without understanding time, we cannot in scientific, uh, in, in scientific way make an, any, any step uh, further. You know, going all the, uh, circulating in the, in the knowledge we already have. So we need the hypothesis of time. And that is so obvious. It is absolutely obvious that this constant present time is all the time, but where is the theory from that? Only my theory. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to, to make that those consequences. If that is so, that we have continuum, which is given by continuity, law and so on, what are the consequences from, for the space, for mass, for energy, for life, for all these great questions? Which are which are pending all the time. I mean, for thousand years. So we've got about five minutes. Oh, what are you most excited about as you look ahead? You you said you've told me. You said it at the beginning. You're optimistic. You know, you're you're optimistic. Very much. What are you most excited about as we look ahead over the next two to five years? I would say that maybe one year will not pass from this moment and. We will uh, present, I mean, not only me, but me, me too. I mean, we will present completely new uh, understanding, not only of time, but on also of energy. So energy is a time-space formation, but we don't know also what space is. People think, I mean, have that impression that understands, understand space. That is not so. You have uh, 114 or 115 theories of space. Which one is truthful? I mean, <laughs> which one is right? Over 100 years. And for time, we almost have nothing. I mean, we, in the history of mankind, we, we, we have, I don't know, I think that, for, uh, I mean, about the time, <clears throat> time subject and what time is, maybe is written, I mean, to be sensible, uh, maybe 50 pages, maybe less. Nothing. And you can, in two hours, you can read everything whatever was uh, published in the history of mankind about the time. It is something almost uh, unbelievable, but that is so. And time is the essence of everything. If we know, we know how time is functioning, everything has, uh, else is the consequence, and that is a free energy concept. Free energy is pumping time from what we call past, or future 
and use it in the in the present moment so that it can circulating uh, that energy uh, energy content so we are not making energy we are just putting the energy to circulate over time and use it that's simple like that so now we we are at the edge of changing a scientific paradigm from space energy and mass into time so paradigm of a new science and a new humanity will be time and the understanding of time will empower us with enormous possibilities. Wow, it's just been so fascinating looking at the world through your lens, Velimir. And uh... working for 30 years and also in connection with the world government <laughs> in Asia. Yeah. In Asia. Yeah. They know a lot, but they also need uh, many people to transfer that knowledge in a way that people that the others uh, accept it that's how it, 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 it will make that change into a good way I mean, otherwise you know you will have a clash yeah. and, and is that is that, is that what you feel is happening now have you seen that begin it to is happen? happening exactly now but you hear you i mean it is completely com completely apparent that uh, this action I mean, this action of the world governments, where that government wants to show the existence of it, so that that they want to say to everybody on the world, we we exist, is this pandemic uh, discipline of the old states, which are don't know what they are doing <laughs> actually and why. You know, the word world government to a lot of people has very negative connotation, but you seem to be saying that we. That, that they are not a negative force? Or are you saying that there is a world government that is the negative force that is, that is, you know, basically on the side of what we would call evil, but then there is this other shadow government or these secret societies which are making sure that the balance remains in, on the side the of evil? The problem good. is that people don't want to, to, to change anything because it's emotional risk. I want to stay everything like it is. I mean, that like parents say to children, you will be what I, if I'm engineer, you will be engineer. If I have a company, you will now inherit that company and be also the director of a company. That is a kind of, uh, of traditional approach, which is always so. For example, in the, in the history of, of, of Europe, for example, who, who are those who, who, who were uh, persecuted or, or burned? Scientists. I mean, Galileo Galilei. He was, I mean, for the for uh, almost almost burned. And who helped? On the other hand, who helped to people to live a little bit better? Only science and scientific discoveries. Not a religious person. Religious persons are talking and talking and promising and so on. And you have to obey. But that's the end. And what scientists are doing? I make you the apparatus which you can use. Now you can wash your your, uh, uh, your clothes, and instead of washing clothes on the river like it was hundred years ago, now you can read a book. That is the moment of how how spirituality comes over technology, over over science helping helping people into into operation and now it is uh, i mean yeah. the moment uh, you know now, now it's yeah. a, it's a critical moment of that yeah. yeah so the attempt to hijack everything yes was real but failed and the future is bright is that is that what you're telling us Velimir? absolutely but, but people have to change consciousness that's all i mean what does it mean i am against the machines I'm against the world government because they are evil. I don't know them, but I know they are evil. How I know they are evil if I don't know them? I mean, first, first of all, and and what are what are on the other hand, uh, the problem is, the problem is if you want to change uh, <clears throat> co uh, collective consciousness of subconsciousness or a mental state of a society, you have sometimes to use, to use means which are not uh, uh, obviously good for everybody, but the effect is good. So the effect of this pandemic is incredibly good because it's uni unified the world. I mean, it, it, there is a world unification 
in the in the way that everybody say virus corona yes we are the 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 one society on the planet which is our small uh, vehicle we are using uh, going through the universe and that is that is that is the point now there is uh, now will be some discoveries of fundamental laws in science which are uh, additionally uh, elevate the consciousness of the of, of the people because now okay informationally we are one that's that's obvious but now scientifically which means that uh, uh, professors and academics and the others have a little bit to step uh, backward and to say okay we have a new science and that's something which is world government preparing now that will be the next step Vladimir, thank you so much. I know you have to run. You've got to get to Thank you so much. It's been wonderful talking to thank you. Thank you. Your energy, your, your alternative view on the world. I hope it just provokes some thoughts, some critical thinking about our thinking. That's what we need, right? <laughs> Against thank David so Dyke, who was speaking about uh, reptiles. I mean, come on. I mean, those, those fairy tales from ancient times. <laughs> now again, no, it is not like that. <laughs> Completely, co completely light will will come from 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 the future to enlighten our minds. Wonderful! Thank you so much, Bon voyage. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank it's been a pleasure. You. Bye for now.